program. You will receive an identity disk. Everything you do or learn will be imprinted on this disk. If you lose your disk or fail to follow commands, you will be subject to immediate de-resolution. Hey YouTube, my name is Brandon Red, and if you've never been to this channel before, this is Ramen Noodle Budgets, where I typically try and show you guys how to make things as cheap as I possibly can. So, um, before we begin, I'd like to thank my sponsor, myself. Seriously guys, someone please sponsor me. These videos cost so much money to make these days. Um, I filmed this entire video and then I just was editing and realized my memory card got corrupted or something and is missing like five videos, including the intro and the first few steps of this build. So I'm going and just refilming my intro. So I'm gonna look really different in different stages throughout this video because this project took me like five weeks. So obviously because you know the title and clicked on this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make a Tron Legacy and maybe Tron Ares. I just announced the movie halfway through me making this video. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make that identity disc. Now, I'm actually using a Spin Master toy. These toys actually came out when the film originally came out, I think in 2010. They retail for about $20. They're a lot more now. I luckily got two, both for around $50. Online right now, I've only ever seen them around 100. So if you cannot, or you don't wanna spend that much money on it, I know some people are doing resin casts, but also there's an awesome 3D file that I will talk about later in the video and I'll link in the description below. The 3D print, it's hollowed out for the most part and you could do pretty much the exact same thing that I'm gonna be doing in this video. So I'm gonna jump right in and try and fill in footage where I can that's missing. So yeah. So like I said, um, this is the original disc. It kind of has dumb, flashy things and noise. I'm missing footage here. So there are these little screw holes in the back. You're gonna wanna unscrew all of that. I have to give a huge shout out to Soul Inertia. Our, uh, I think it's also Inertia Props. It's Fatal5150 on eBay. You can buy the upgrade kit from him that I'll be using. He's fantastic. I'm actually gonna show a little bit of his footage here from his video. Um, you're going to want to take all those batteries out and then just unscrew it and remove all of those electronics. They come out really easily. There's barely any screws that hold them in. Here's back to my footage, thank God. And you're going to need a rotary tool and the disc cutting wheel and you're going to cut off most of these pieces inside. I don't want to go too in depth because I know inertia props on his direction says confidential so I don't want to give away any of his secrets. Um, but for the most part you're really going to take out most of these little plastic pieces in there with your Dremel tool, except for the posts that hold the screws, obviously, unless then, I know some people are taking like those out and then putting magnets in to hold it together, but I opted for the screws because it worked out. You have to remove this whole battery section, which was a huge pain in the ass. It was really difficult. I took it out chunk by chunk. The next thing you have to do is take out that original C-ring because it doesn't diffuse light and from the way it's designed with a toy, there's only like four sections where the original LEDs would go in. I think there were literally like four or five LEDs for that entire C-ring, which is ridiculous. We're going to be replacing them with NeoPixel later on. So I kind of just went around in circles and really got rid of all of that plastic until the ring popped off. I unfortunately did break the ring. I think that happens with a lot of people. Okay, so for the most part, all of the internals of this guy are completely taken out and I've done pretty much all the dremeling that I need to do. I'll probably go back in and fill some things or kind of clean some things up because as, as we speak right now, some of this is pretty messy. I have done a lot of projects in my life, but this has to be the most stressful that I've ever worked on in my entire life, mainly due to how hard these things are to find and the fact that it's plastic. I ran into two cracks that I ended up making. They're both crazy, crazy minuscule. Uh, the camera wouldn't be able to pick them up. But just to make sure that they don't continue to spread, I think we should put a little bit of super glue on the other side of them and let that set overnight um, to just really try and get a solid bond. Um, I'm really glad I didn't end up doing the inner C-ring that isn't cut out because with my Dremel skills, um, it would came out looking horrible. So we're just gonna make sure uh, that one ring. So once you take out that ring though, um, the stability is com pretty much completely gone. This thing felt really solid, but at the moment it's currently super floppy. I should have drilled these holes first, but I'm gonna have to do it the hard way and do it after I install the C-ring once that finally arrives. So I'm gonna try and clean this thing up a little bit more and then we'll jump on to the actual upgrade section. All right, so even though I just said in that last thing I wasn't going to do this, I just talked to Cylinder Props and he's actually sending me a second C-ring free of charge. So I am going to bear and grin it and cut out this section. I am absolutely terrified, but I'm really gonna take my time with it. Um, 
and go as slow as possible and clean it up over a few days. Like if it doesn't look perfect, I'm gonna stop. I'm not gonna try and like rush it and then I'm gonna come back and work on it. Another thing I'm worried about, or not really worried about, but contemplating is the piece was already kind of scratched up because it was already used by another, the person who previously owned it. I'm debating on just sanding out all of this, um, like, you know, Spin Master information, all of these labels and the top piece and then painting them uh, and like filling in the spots and filling in the battery compartment and using a filler to make this thing look a little more professional and more like a prop. I haven't decided on that fully yet, but we'll see. All right, so there I am using that Dremel really carefully to go around the edge. If I was to go back and redo this, I actually would have used the Dremel more towards the center and kind of built it out. Uh, mine was super, super rough. I took my X-Acto knife and began to cut away more of that plastic until all of that white uh, was more or less gone. I then, I forgot to talk about, because I found this footage later, I cut out those little notches on the sides because that's how it is in the film and that's where the light kind of shines through. All right, so, so two days later, this is where we're at. Um, what I decided to do, so like I was saying, I didn't know if I wanted to sand off all of this and paint it. That's exactly what I'm going to do. It's going to make things a lot easier and make things look a lot more clean. I used the Dremel, um, I got all that out, and what I did was I glued the battery. This will focus. I glued the battery compartment down um, so that I could actually go all the way across, so it's going to be like a full C ring in back. And what I'm about to do is I'm going to have to sand all of this off and then we're going to use some Bondo body filler to fill in the battery compartment as well as the switch guy because I'm not going to need that for my build. Um, and then what I decided I was going to do is since I'm using the Nano Biscotti, there's already an activation switch here which utilizes like a simple push button. Um, and I'm just going to use that exact same design and um, use that as my activation switch. And then I'm going to put a recharge port in one of these drilled out holes, which yes, I drilled out these holes. I don't know if they're big enough yet because I don't have the kit. So I'm going to sand all this off and try and repaint and make this thing look as good as I can. So that whole thing about me using the tactile button that's concluded is all a lie. I'll talk about it later. So start by using just a, like a 400 grit sandpaper, sand away all of that letter uh, lettering and just try and get that battery down smooth. I then mix up some Bondo. If you don't know how to mix up Bondo, what are you even doing in props? Just kidding. But it's really, really easy. You just mix up the hardener, um, the pretty easy ratio to follow. And then I just took this and kind of placed it over. I put some masking tape behind that switch hole and then dumped some on there and then put some over the box and sanded that smooth. It took me one run and it actually came out very, very smooth. Then you want to get that good old filler primer. Um, I'm painting on such a messy table. Don't follow my my ways. After that I wet sanded that and repeated that until everything was super smoothed out and got rid of all the scratches and those filled in cracks that I had before. And then I'm using a flat protective enamel paint. Let's get I hate enamel paints. I ended up using another paint after all of this when I had to repaint it but you know how it is. Uh, so you're just gonna hit it with a few really light coats and build it up. There's the mat and you can leave it like that but I looked at a lot of screen used photos of the original and I think I figured out how they did it. So um, I masked off these weird lines around where the C ring is gonna be, as well as just in that intersection and left those covered. And then I'm gonna hit it with a satin spray paint on top. I didn't use gloss because they didn't look glossy, but I knew there was some type of weird, um, very like kind of variation going on between those two sections. And I couldn't figure it out at first, but I I think this is exactly how they did it. So like once I removed the tape, this was exactly the look I was going for and I thought it looked just like some of these set photos and added just a whole new layer of oomph to like the whole project. As you can see, I think that looks really awesome. So I finally got the kit from Soul Inertia. It took a few weeks because USPS is kind of just all over the place. I installed those little um, bevels that the light kind of shines through. In the movie, it's used for projections. I then installed that C-ring by very gently uh, just pushing it in section by section. This is actually really difficult. Um, I had a really hard time with these and actually ended up melting one. So... I had to order another one and that took forever, so that's a whole ordeal, but 
After you have that, you can glue it in with some E6000. I just put some on a brush and was painting it around the edges. Okay, so it's been literally two weeks since the last footage of me putting in all those retrofitted pieces from Soul Inertia. I finally have the pieces in. I actually had to buy new ones because, or a new C-ring because I ended up melting one in an accident with hot glue because I was trying to get it to fit in here. It took me a really long time to get it to fit in the back. Even now it's super wonky. I think they look okay. Um, I had to repaint the entire thing so some paint actually got in there because I had to, I scratched it up so bad from like actually doing uh, like the installation of it. So there's that. So much time has passed that I actually found another one of the Spin Master toys. So I'm hoping to do another one of these later. And then I promised you guys I would. If you can't find the Spin Master, there's a really good 3D printed file on Thingiverse. Um, the pieces aren't together. It's just three kind of floating right now. I just wanted to show you kind of concept that you don't really need the Spin Master toys. It does work, it even has this 3D printed ring that uh, illuminates light really, really well. But now we're gonna talk about electronics because that's the most important. And I'm gonna show you on my super dirty bed. Okay, so that footage is missing for some reason as well. So I'm gonna try and quickly talk about this as best as I can. To power the entire thing, I'm using what is known as a Nano Biscotti. It's a board that um, is made mostly for lightsabers. And what it does is it works by just taking a sound file or sound files on an SD card and plays them while also controlling the lights has really easy activation. It's kind of an all in one instead of having to use an Arduino or open source boards, which you can use, but this is such a tiny little board. It's about the size of like one of my knuckles, like from knuckle to knuckle, I guess. And this works perfectly for this project. So I just basically ran two NeoPixel strips in parallel, ran it, or used the smallest batteries I could find, lithium ion, which was the 14500, and then had a recharge port, which I put in there, which worked very, very well. So I'm gonna kind of show it in the next one. If anyone has any questions or wants a whole wiring diagram, I will gladly send it, just let me know. An hour later, I got all the electronics for the most part inside of this disc half. So I have my two 14500 batteries, these NeoPixel strips. Everything is hot glue, by the way. Hot glue is like what I found in the forums of people who've also done similar projects. It's like the go-to, and it's pretty great. Um, right now, the Nano Biscotti is floating. Um, I was kind of doing all these, adding all of the fonts to the guy on there, or on the SD card. That guy's just gonna get stuffed in here. My speaker is hidden right where the original speaker thing was. Now, to kind of explain what I was doing before, so there's a kill key in there right now. It's on this side right here. So. That's my recharge port. End of line, man. As you can hear, there's that awesome, this is the dark, like the dark side, clue font or Rinsler. And um, right now, the momentary switch is hidden here. I'm gonna 3D print a little button that's gonna just glue on top of there, but click the button and... There's that. And then obviously if you hold the button down, if you've never had one of these before, it's gonna change the font. And then we'll turn the, this is a cyan blue. And it has that awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is reassemble this whole thing with the screws and then work on this little button guy. I then began to assemble everything. So I put that outer ring on there and that fits in perfectly where it used to go. I then put on that top half while making sure everything was able to fit first and put those screws in slowly. I put them all in and then began to tighten them until the discs kind of came together. Just because that recharge port sticks out just a little too much, it causes that one side to like not go together by just like less than maybe half a millimeter and the light doesn't shine through so it's perfect. I 3D printed this super small little circle with a little indent on the other backside, put a little bit of super glue on top of that auxiliary switch and just held that in place for a few seconds.
So I really hope you guys enjoyed this project. It was probably like the most stressful thing I've ever worked on in my entire life. I literally, um, I didn't really talk about it, but I repainted this thing like five times in between and I still have a lot of paint errors in it. Um, there was some cracking and stuff and uh, the, the actual C-rings didn't come out nearly as well as I wanted them to just because of my own personal error. But overall, I mean, having a thing that can... This thing looks... It sounds amazing. I'm definitely going to do another one with my second one. I'm just trying to figure out um, if I want to mold my own pieces or how I want to go with like a better soundboard, like a CFX. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video made a lot of sense to people, especially people who aren't into the whole saber smithing thing. If you guys have any questions or any, like you want any insight on how to do something like this yourself, because I know they did literally just confirm Tron 3. This this project has been so long that before I started it, Tron was 3 wasn't even announced. I know Jared Leto's in it and people are freaking out about that, but hope you guys have a great rest of your day and yeah.